One of the best ways to test for cerebellar function is to do the finger, uh, finger to nose test. So the patient's going to stand in a Romberg's position with their feet together, their hands by the side, actually the hands out to the side. They're going to close their eyes and bring their finger to their nose in this position. And what we want to see is that they can hit the target, the target being their nose, and they can do that without a tremor, and they can do it very precisely. So an example of, um, of dysfunction would be if the patient has a tremor when trying to touch their nose. Or for example, if they miss the target and can't hit their nose. So if, if you put the patient in this Romberg's position and tell them to touch their nose with their eyes closed, you can easily test cerebellar function. Now, as a rehabilitation, after you've tested the cerebellum, then you see which side is, um, is more functional and which side has less functional output. So for example, if I needed to work on my right cerebellum, what I could do as a rehabilitation strategy is utilizing a target right here. So I can actually do finger to nose with the target as a rehabilitation to strengthen that cerebellum. So for example, um, I can stand here, I can touch my nose, I can touch the center of the target. My nose, the center of the target. Nose, center of the target. And I want to do that as fast as I can while still being accurate. So that would be the first progression. Then in addition to that, you can see that we have numbers written alongside the outside here. So after the patient gets pretty good at doing finger to nose with the center of the target, you can make it more difficult by having them touch different numbers. So for example, you can have them touch every third number. So if I'm standing here, and usually I'd be standing right in front of it, but just for this purpose, I'm standing off to the side. So I would touch my nose, touch number one. Touch my nose, touch number three. Touch my nose, touch number six. Touch my nose, number nine. Nose, 12. Nose, 15. So do you see how it makes it a little bit more difficult because the patient needs to look for the number, they need to be accurate with their nose, and then it's a different target each time. So the first time, we did the same target. Nose, center, nose, center, nose, center. Whereas by changing, um, by going around the circle, then we go one, three, six, nine, 12, and so on. And you can also change it too. You can do, for example, different sides of the circle. So you could do, okay, right outside circle, left inside circle, right outside circle, left inside circle. So you can hit different parts on the target to make it more interactive for the patient so their brain is paying attention and it makes it more difficult to build neuroplasticity of the weak cerebellar side. This is a really great protocol that you can do with your patients. And if you don't have a target in your office, no problem, then you can utilize, you could put up different stickers. You can see we have stickers along the wall. They can touch different targets or at home, the patient can even do this in front of a mirror. So the patient can stand in front of the mirror, touch their nose, touch part of the mirror, touch their nose, touch part of the mirror. That way they can test their progression as well to make sure that they're developing better cerebellar output. That's a really great strategy that you guys can implement with postural neurology for better postural correction results.